In very childhood, my guru was born to a weaver's family in a small hamlet of coastal Andhra Pradesh state in southern part of India. He was trying to overcome the poverty. His father had passed away when he was very young, maybe around two to two and a half years old. And then his mother was working, working at different homes, and they were passing through poverty. He had an elder brother and two elder sisters, but they were not as intelligent as him. At the age of five, he came to know that they are poor people. He was only five years old. How it happened, he used to recall and talk to us sometimes of his experience. Uh, he was puzzled that he never saw his mother eating food. Always, he used to feel hungry almost every two hours and used to demand for some food with his mother. His mother would readily would have kept some rice or something to eat and she would give him. One day it occurred to the mind, okay, I want to see that my mother also eats food. It should not be that only I go on eating my food. So he demanded, Mother, I haven't seen you eating any food. I would like you also to sit and eat with me, he demanded as a child of I. So his mother said, Ki, don't bother about that. I can always sit later. You eat. You are hungry. You need this food. He demanded, no. So then what she did, she served the rice in two leaves. Uh, so once she gave it to him, you have this. I will eat this later. A little later, I have some urgent business to do. Okay, he agreed. She kept it in a nearby place and then went out. He had that food and he hid himself behind the doors. He just wanted to see that that rice is going to be eaten by the mother. Nearly for about a couple of hours, he was standing like that. And after some time, his mother came. When his mother went inside, he slipped out of the home from the back door. Those were the thatched huts in those days in a small hamlet. And then he came back to home from the front side, from other road, and he demanded food. He said, Mother, I'm hungry. I need something to eat. She readily gave that leave which, on which she had served some food for herself. So then he was furious and he started shouting and demanding, jumping. This is very bad. You served it for yourself, but you haven't eaten. You told me a lie that you are going to eat and you didn't eat. Then mother felt like crying and she tears rolled down. So the young boy was very much puzzled. What did I, what did wrong that I do? I just wanted and demanded that my mother also eat the food. Why did she cry? She didn't answer anything. So he came out puzzled and he was deeply thinking. He met his uncle, paternal uncle, his father's younger brother, because his father had died. His uncle was also one of such person who he looked for any inspiration and guidance, all such things. So he went and asked his uncle, all I wanted that my mother also eat. I have never seen her eating, but this is what happened. Ki, what wrong did I do? Why was that she was crying? Then your uncle enlightened him, ki, we are poor people. You must know that after your father's passing away, your mother is working at different homes. She cleans utensils or whatever work she could do, she does. She brings, earns something and brings always. She wants you all to be happy and she feeds you all. He thought, this is very bad. Why should my mother work? What am I supposed to be in this world if I cannot help my mother? He was just five years old. He used to go to school, but this was his thinking. He said, okay, from tomorrow onwards, mother, you are not going to work. I don't need this schooling. Even if I go to school and go to a higher college, one day am I going to earn some livelihood, that's all. This education can be more than that it won't give. That I can do now also. That was his thinking. So he dropped out of the school. He stopped going to school. He started working on the uh, weaving handlooms that uh, his people used to weave sarees and dhutis like this. So early morning he used to get up at 3 o'clock and start weaving vigorously. He learned very quickly and he used to weave, dub work double the a thing of others that they used to do. If other were weaving one sadi in that time, he used to finish two sadis like that he used to do. 
So very so, and then he used to take it to the nearby town and then sell them, bring money. Like that, very soon he picked up this habit of uh, slow business and he had a business mind he always wanted. He used to discuss with his uncle. So his uncle also enlightened him. Look, poverty is not a thing to be ashamed. This was a very beautiful lesson that he learned. It's simply a circumstance, a situation which we can overcome if we can work hard and if we are honest, if we go on the right path. Then the boy was determined, he wanted to overcome the poverty, I must help my family to overcome. So like this he went on. He didn't have slightest inclination towards spirituality, but he was God-fearing though, but not very religious bent of mind. He was very independent thinking. Like in those places, in those days, the casteism was there. There was a beautiful temple of Lord Shiva in the nearby township, which is a pilgrimage center of that area. The presiding deity Lord Shiva is known as Bhimeshwara. He used to go to that temple. But he wouldn't go to the sanctum sanctorium, the actual Shivalingam is there where all devotees used to go and offer worship because the priests were very caste um, oriented people. They used to be very arrogant and egoistic that they belonged to a higher caste of Brahmins and he belonged to a weaver's family. What he used to do, he used to go to the side of the temple nearby where a banyan tree was there. Under a banyan tree there was a Shivalingam. Somebody would have placed or on its own it had come. That was the legendary story. Quietly he used to stand, pray there, tell God, God, you are here also, is it true or not? You are not simply to be hidden in that sanctum sanctorium. I don't have to come for you there. You can be here also for me. I am playing, praying sincerely. I don't like these casteism problems of this priesthood. I don't want to go there. So I hope you will understand. He said God always whenever he went. And then he used to come back home. So he was that type of nature. He was very honest, hardworking, independent thinking. He didn't have any fear at all. He always thought, if I am sincere, God will not punish. God will understand. I don't have to go uh, just listen to the priest and the priest unnecessarily try to create fear. That's how he used to think and understand. So like this, as he was going, then he had opened a small shop also where he used to keep vegetables and other type of things, slowly developing. One day, <clears throat> he came home. That was the seventh day of August month in 1949. He was uh, 14 year old, I suppose. He was born in 1935, in 1949. Uh, his uh, maternal grandfather needed cataract operation, so his mother had taken him to nearby town's hospital, Kakinada. So he had promised that he will go that evening, pay the hospital charges and bring grandfather back to the village. <laughs> that was the situation. So he went around and wherever he needed to take back the debts that uh, some people owned, he owed him money. So he took that money, he requested that I need the money to pay hospital charges. He came home, he was very hungry, around one or two o'clock probably. His sister was cooking some food. She said, Ki, the food is not yet ready, it will take some time, you sit down. He felt irritated, yeah, because I'm hungry and you are not yet ready with the food. Then he came outside and sat down. So one of his friends came and told him, let's go and play some time outskirts on the canal bun. So he demanded, but he said, I am very hungry. First, if I can eat something, then only I can think of anything else you tell. That's how Swami used to recall. My sister has not yet um, cooked the food. He was murmuring and lamenting. Then his friend said, okay, let us have some coffee in the canteen nearby. So he took them and Swamiji had uh, something to eat and uh, some coffee. Then he came out, He and some other friends also joined. Swamiji used to recall there were about 12 of his, means including himself, friends uh, all were there. They all went towards the canal band on the outskirts of the village. As they were approaching that place, then he saw some fruits falling down from a nearby palmyra tree. So he went and brought those three fruits. His friends had all, some of them has already jumped into the canal. They were having a bath in that one. They were playing. He always used to carry one knife and a stick in his hand. So he was the leader always. 
he was because he was always fearless anything that happened like for example once he used to recall uh, i will tell this incident but before that once a magician type of person had come to their village he was trying to take money from people by threatening that i can uh, transform you into a tiger into a jackal into this that he was threatening i am i have all siddhis and powers like that one so <clears throat> all were afraid of him they used they wouldn't go near him they simply used to give some money to him but whereas this boy was very courageous he asked his uncle uncle do you really think that he has such powers that he can transform me into a tiger look one thing you take a rope keep it with you now i am going to challenge this man let him transform me into a tiger don't worry i am not going to eat you up i i will still know that you are my uncle even if i become a tiger <laughs> it's no problem just keep a rope you tie me to a tree so that i don't run away from you all all that's all i want means he was uh, that courageous and determined and fearless if at all he is going to um, transform me into a tiger that's all i am sure still then i will be conscious of who i am that's how he used to think he went and challenge okay now i am not going to give you a single penny you transform me to a tiger let me see if you have the power he threatened he murmured he uttered mantras this that everything so i am you are standing and nothing happened finally he said ki i am more powerful than you i have more siddhis that you cannot transform me into a tiger <laughs> i lamented so that was the nature of him though he was not very religious he had some inborn qualities of uh, honesty fearlessness and determination you know, to hang on to it if need to do something after all death is going to happen to me that's how he used to be fearless probably that's the reason he became the chosen one so when he saw the fruits falling down from a tree he brought them so with his knife he cut them into 12 pieces gave one piece to all friends he had that nature whatever he wanted to enjoy he used to distribute to his friends let everybody enjoy he had a universal mind he was not selfish or narrow minded always so he kept one piece for him he was trying to squeeze out juice by peeling the skin that was the first time he heard a om oh, monotonous sound coming out of the fruit and his body started trembling all over he couldn't control and then he saw a dazzling light around the fruit as he had kept the fruit like this and then as he was watching that fruit took shape of a shivalingam and then that broke into two pieces fell down then he saw a jangama sage means a person with a matted hair a beard like a sage he was dressed and he was tall about 8 feet or so so he stood in front of him asked the boy to sit into lotus posture he didn't know what is lotus posture i he simply asked ki why should i sit down but he couldn't resist his mind had become like he it was captivated by something as if somebody was controlling he just sat down then that person jangama sage helped him to sit into lotus posture then he touched in between eyebrows asked him the same thing that i tell the technique when i initiate ki concentrate your mind and sight here and just keep watching there don't repeat any mantra any name and do not imagine anything this word the boy cut hold swami ji used to tell this ki as he was touching me i was losing con- con- outer consciousness all i heard from the jangam message was he asked me to concentrate my mind and sight and keep watching there by focusing the attention and then he asked me not to repeat any mantra so i did not repeat he asked me not to imagine anything i did not imagine anything i went on watching simply without opening the eyes and eventually samadhi came that's how swami ji used to tell that's how he got initiated into this tapas <coughs> through this amazing divine experience where uh, when this happened none of other friends saw jangama sage appearing or any such thing only this boy had that experience and he got transformed many people have asked me even some the intellectual questions also have been asked to me what is the guarantee that that boy really saw that manifestation of the divine a jangama sage whereas others wouldn't see anything so what is more important is here when such a manifestation or a vision when happens 
depending on the solidness of that uh, manifestation, if it is such a real one like this world, so a transformation happens in the person. An ordinary village weaver boy who was not educated, who was not spiritually trained, went into a deeper meditation for 12 years. So imagine you all try to meditate for one hour, how much you are able to keep the mind quiet. It keeps running like a monkey and you are trying to bring it back and it's running. So like that, he kept it for 18 to 20 hours in a stretch and just sat down like that one. So that continued well. Villagers tried to disturb him, test him, poured water, mud, tried to take him to home. He won't, then he came back again at the same place. Then eventually he moved to the graveyard, thinking because the village urchins would trouble him by, they even soaked a cloth into uh, kerosene and then put on his leg and put a fire just to test him. So the skin burned. <clears throat> well, next day his mother came back with her father. She was shocked because he was the bread earner for the family, <coughs> though he was engaged though. But when he came, so Sw Swamiji, he opened the eyes and saw her, then assured her, Ki, let me do this one. Something has happened, I don't know who it was. He didn't know who the Jangama sage was. Like after a couple of months, it was totally rainy season when he was sitting in the graveyard, he was sitting in the mud. His all uh, skin became decayed, became white because of the water and muddy things. Then rodents and scorpions used to bite him. And one day it became so painful, he started crying. He was only a boy of 14 year old when he came out of his samadhi. He thought, Ki, why should I be sitting like a dead man in this uh, graveyard? I don't know who that person was, that Jangama sage. Why did he come and why did he order me to sit down? I couldn't resist. Normally, I wouldn't have listened to anybody like that one. I don't know what, it, what spell he made it on me. So I must go back home and do my business and look after the family. My mother must be very anxious about me. Like this sitting, he got up and started going. He saw the same Jangama sage at the graveyard's gate. And he said, for 12 years, you are supposed to do this one. You are destined. I am supposed to manifest and help you to finish this tapas. Once you do that 12 years tapas, then afterwards you can go back anywhere and you do whatever you want. So that was how he was made to sit for this tapas. Eventually, like every month that Jangama sage used to appear, guide him and then disappear in the thin air. At the end of tapas, then once when he came out of samadhi, he saw a male and female figure standing there. The beautiful aura was there and he was dressed like Lord Shiva with a trident and a skin on him, tiger skin. So he, it took some time for him to come out of the consciousness of Samadhi. And then he asked you who you are. He said, Ki, mm, we have been trying to wake you up for quite some time. You are in total Nirvikalp Samadhi. In this world, people worship and adore me as a Lord Shiva. This is my consort to Parvati Goddess. So your tapas is complete. If there's anything, now you can go anywhere and you do anything you want. You can do business, you can go back home. Then Swamiji said, Ki, I don't have anything in my consciousness now. I don't have any desire. If you have anything needing from me, is, was there any purpose that I was made to do this tapas? If you have any work for me, if you tell me, I will do that, he said. So that was what, like if God appears before you all, what would you ask? A million dollar, ten million dollar, make me billionaire. <laughs> but that boy had no desire at all. It mind has totally settled into the self. He had experienced the Nirvikalp Samadhi. And then Lord Shiva said, the people of this world have forgotten themselves. That is why they are miserable, they are into conflict, they are insecure. They need to know about themselves, how do they really exist. So teach this path of meditation, Dhyana Yoga to them. Initiate anyone without any discrimination, whoever comes to you. And that is all I want from you. Uh, they disappeared, they merged in him. That's how Swamiji used to tell.